Today, we're going to be talking about Chiari malformations and signs that you shouldn't ignore. So the first question is, what is a Chiari malformation? Well, there are four types of Chiari malformation, and the most common one is called the Chiari 1 or type 1 Chiari malformation. This occurs when the base of the brain protrudes through the opening at the base of the skull. That opening at the base of the skull is called the foramen magnum. Well, in Latin, it means big hole. So it's the big opening at the base of the skull. And the part of the brain that sits back there is called the cerebellum. Now, the cerebellum has two little protrusions that are called the cerebellar tonsils, and they're the part of the cerebellum that's closest to the spinal cord. And when those cerebellar tonsils go out of the skull through the foramen magnum and they're measured more than five millimeters beyond the foramen magnum on an MRI, that is then called a Chiari 1 malformation. If the cerebellar tonsils go through the foramen magnum, but they're not five millimeters or more below the foramen magnum, then the radiologists usually say that they are low-lying cerebellar tonsils, but they won't give it the name. Chiari 1 malformation. Now, a Chiari malformation may be entirely asymptomatic. So a person may have cerebellar tonsils that protrude through the foramen magnum, and they may go many, many years, their whole life even, without even knowing it. But they can also be extremely symptomatic. And some of those symptoms are the following. So headache is a very important and common symptom for Chiari malformation. And typically, these are headaches that are at the back of the head, at sort of at the base of the skull, and they're made worse by things like coughing or sneezing or bending over. You may hear these called a tuss of headache because they are worse with coughing. And they're also often worse with changes in the barometric pressure. So if there's a storm coming in, these headaches may be considerably worse. And part of the reason for that is that when those cerebellar tonsils are sitting in that opening at the base of the skull, they interfere with the flow of cerebrospinal fluid. And so the CSF, or cerebrospinal fluid, which is made in the brain is unable to circulate around the brain and down the spine and back up as it usually does. And so we get increased pressure in the head because of that increased volume of cerebrospinal fluid. And so typically people will say that these headaches really feel like increased pressure and they may feel like there's a lot of pressure behind the eyes as well. Neck pain is also very common with a Chiari malformation, and often people will describe pain in what's described as a coat hanger distribution. So basically going from the base of the skull down the neck and into the shoulders. People with Chiari will also often have issues with dizziness and problems with their balance because the cerebellum is involved in maintenance of balance. And if there is pressure on those cerebellar tonsils, it can interfere with the balance center. Muscle weakness is very common in people with a Chiari 1, and they may also describe numbness in or tingling in the arms and legs. There may be problems with vision, blurred vision, Vision, double vision, and extreme sensitivity to light. And there may also be issues with hearing, hearing loss, ringing in the ears, and extreme sensitivity to sound. Patients may also describe difficulty with swallowing, so they may have trouble either swallowing liquids or sometimes solids, and they may have changes in their voice. Now, because of the difficulty with circulation of the cerebrospinal fluid, as I mentioned earlier, some people with a Chiari malformation develop something called a syrinx. And a syrinx is a, like a lake of cerebrospinal fluid that is pushed down into the center of the spinal cord. And the syrinx may cause additional symptoms, including difficulty walking and issues with bladder or bowel control. 
So if you have symptoms that are suggestive of a Chiari malformation, it's really important to have a thorough neurological evaluation to determine whether imaging is indicated to look for a Chiari. And you can find extensive information about Chiari malformations and syringomyelia at the website for the Bobby Jones Chiari and Syringomyelia Foundation, which is at bobbyjonescsf.com. Org. Thanks so much for spending this time with me today, and I wish you the very best on your journey.